he was going to break the sea. The waves or the distance would not break Rob Sardar. He would break them instead. Clasping the coarse wooden railing, he drilled his eyes into his father's face, as if hoping to cause physical harm. The old man's return still was hollow, shadowed by his bristling eyebrows. Yet even as they exchanged this long, hateful glare, the crowd on the docks closed in around him, and Hamill was lost. Gold port slipped further away, its gigantic arches spanning the cove like a bulbous tree that had hurled its bulk over the gap. Tendrils of moss dangled from it, where there were lizard people in harnesses chipping away at the stuff. If he hadn't been so angry, Rob might have stayed and watched them peel the buck away, and waited to see if the stove beneath really was gold. Bile filled his mouth, and he moved from the railing and almost bumped against it on the sailors. For a small ship, it had a large crew that made the stink of sour sweat pungent. The spices and bitter fragrances that clung to their bodies almost masked the salt sea air, but not quite. They were his people, yet this was the first time he had been around them. He found himself grudgingly admiring their thick muscles and curled hair. His father had brought him up in the country of Lizardford, and saw our tribes constantly at odds with one another. The hero was at last, amongst humans. He should have been ecstatic, yet he trembled with rage. Stop your wobbling, cried one of the sailors. Rob lifted his head and followed the voice until he spotted a wide man with an orange beard, a filthy apron, and a cauldron under his arm. He, his bearded face nodded slowly as he lowered it, wrinkling his chin against his chest. Another, much taller figure, with a flowing coat that covered his hairy chest, was prodding him. You're making another soup from carrots again, and I'll skin your face off. The sailor bellowed, making the chef step back with a nervous smile and an uncertain nod. I'm serious, Wobbly. You give me a drop of that gunk, and you're off my do not remain list. You understand? Rob sidled closer and put his body between the two of them. The taller sailor looked down with a sneer. He wore a velvet lined coat that clung to his body in waves, patched by sweat and sea stains. Rob wished he had more than his worn blue tunic and rope belt, but he hoped his facial expression was enough to direct some of the fear into this bully before him. Laughter burst from the crew, rolling and rising like the tide, making Rob's blood rage until he thought it would make steam come from his skin. What do you think you're doing, boy? The sailor chuckled before shoving him to one side. The chef's useless. Next port, I say we chop him up and give him to the beasts. See if he makes a meal better than he makes one. You could try that. Rob looked up, looked up at the chef. His, uh, Rob looked up at the chef, who was eyeing him with a panic and a shake of his hairy head. But then you'd have to deal with me. He leapt and sunk a fist into the sailor's chest. For the impact shook him and threw his knuckles, rattling his arm. Not a smart boy, are you? Let him be. The chef muttered. What's that, Bobbler? You want the boy left alone? He just attacked me. They all saw it. Maybe he can go to the beasts too. Oh, but you wouldn't let such a nice young lad go to a waste like that, would you? Wobbler. Rob was indignant and crouched. Is that your best insult? Make fun of him for his stomach. I can make fun of you for your brain, you know. What kind of idiot taunts the chef? If I were to poke the chef, I'd be very careful about every mouthful of food. The sailor's smile dissipated. The crew laughed again, but there was a shift in tone and allegiance. Rob stood to his full height as the sound grew, and the chef retreated into the shadows of the cabin. This isn't a performing theatre, growled Sir Walter McGough. Those crates won't stop by themselves. Aye, Captain. The sailor hurried away, leaving Rob to glare up at the woman who had ended the confrontation permanently. Captain Oi Creek Doily beckoned him up to the quarterdeck with a stern or a wave. She wore silk garments with golden stitching across the coattails. Her skirts were pleated gold and black, and held to her waist by a sporran of lattice that fluttered in the wind. Somewhat more impressive than the loud than the loud mouth had been wearing, and considerably more than what Rob's attire. How old are you, boy? she said. Her braided hair jiggle, jingling as she moved. Ten, eleven, a pretty young face aimed enough at sea. I'm thirteen! He tried to sound defiant, but she glared him down. This is my crew. I had my reasons for letting you aboard. If you cross my crew, you cross me. I want you safely delivered, but I won't tolerate your attitude. Rob's innards curved into sour knots, and he avoided her eyes.
cost my crew, it cost me. I want you safe and delivered, but I want to tolerate your attitude. Lord Innan, Innan's curled like a sour knots, and he avoided her eyes. At last she sniffed and straightened up. Camas, is it? You must have done something real bad for your dad to send you there. I didn't do anything, he's a liar! He moved his hand towards the vanishing shore where his father had stood stoically, watching and ensuring his son remained in the embrace of the sea. Ah, your dad told me it was dangerous to keep you in this country. You're a violent boy, or stupid. A clever lad who pick fights with the chef, true. But that midshipman you picked for the avenue. I can fight, I can take everyone on the ship. His feet left the floor and the sky flushed and blurred before his head smacked into the air. Laughter surrounded him again. He shook his head and let the captain's eyes as she looked down from the top of the stairs. Standing proved difficult, and he leant against one of the brakes in the crowd of the ship. Facing more jibes from the crew. If you don't want that to happen again, you should keep your mouth shut, the captain bellowed, inviting more laughter from other supporters. He cast his eyes past the mockery and tried to focus on the last glimmer of gold pawns. The salt on the air worried at his nose and throat, intensifying with every rise of the waves. He wiped his eyes to rid his own, the own, his own salt to water from them. He tried to see the shore, the golden arches of the ports, or at least the distant bronze horizon that spoke. The hall was water and a haze of dry. Bodies pushed past him, deep throated coughs stealing out his ears, and the coast vanished into a murky grey wave of eyes. Rob tightened his jaw and stepped forward to the forecastle, the door to the lower cabins. The floor was damp and splintered and stained with green patches. It was mostly plain and flat. He'd heard of ships with decorative floors and the jeweled lamps going from the beginning. Well, this was a trade vessel, simple, light and sturdy, crammed with barrels and crates marked with painted symbols Rob vaguely recognised as human letters. He knew the lizard letters better and had a few spoken words of their beast tongue that they used to shepherd the giant creatures that roamed their deserts. The captain had raised his eye, bringing his mind back to the old days in the sorrow city of Gallant. We'd seen plenty of soldiers cut from the same army before. Evil, brutish, and intimidating. They had bullied his small friends far too many times. The sight of another such person amongst his own kind was disheartening. As he hurried into the corridor that went down into a steamy, groaning stairway, he pushed the memories away. The smell of boiling cabbage and roasted potatoes intensified as it flared his nostrils and caught the air. He came to a cramped passage that turned the red light of the ship. Creaking with the bells, he slumped towards the rear of the ship, attempting to move with the rocking and swaying, his ears catching the clattering and rustling noises from ahead. Licking his lips, he turned around the door of the galley and smirked at the moon, hurrying back and forth with a set of blocks and assistant quarters. The chef's beard had bits of food stuck in it. His talk jerking, he knew it was fit to burst around his waist. His skin was strangely light around his eyes and mouth, but he's always the same dark shade as Rob otherwise. You wear to our lad? He asked. Oh, I can't see you back there, but I can smell you a mile off. Lad, just give you a pop top, give you trouble. The captain hit me, but slipped punk into the galley and peered at the immense chef. I thought she was helping me, then she punched me in the face. There was a pause. I've had worse though. He added something. But, just you wait. We shall have a pot of the wall and splash. You know anything's useless. The captain keeps saying she'll get me a new one. She never does. Maybe now. I doubt it. But she's mean and unhelpful. Boy, I'll hear none of that. Get to know her and she's friendly enough. But you gotta show her some respect and treat her like the captain, because you know what? She is the captain. So how can you demand new pots from her? Well, he sniffed uncomfortably and pulled a spoon from his pocket before dipping it into the cauldron. What's your name, lad? Uh, Rob Sarger. He chuckled at the change of subject. Rod? That's no sort of name. He beamed and took a sip, a sip of the soup. Ah, uh, this needs something. Salt. Yeah, yeah, I know. A pinch of urine. He laughed and spat into the mixture. That's a true name, lad. He stuck out a man. They call me Rob. I'm still Rob. My mother named me. She said she heard it well in the north. So, it's a dragish name. All the drags live further north than this, Rob. There was a glimmer of something Bob couldn't place in the chef's eyes as he said his name. It's from the far. Well, so, your ma thinks she saw the pail for us, does she? But she claim it, but nobody ever brings anything back from there. Or they did. 
He sniffed the soup, it was full of spices he had bought by his father and he had scouts. He picked up a knife and backed it on his finger and scrutinising the edge. We lived in Gallant with the lizard people. All right, sounds dangerous if you ask me. The Zerga saw her and used to be humorous. We spent too much time with our big scaly beasties, and soon enough, their own skin turned scaly. Grammary. Hey, what's wrong with you? Sorry, it's an old Saurus word. It means I don't believe you. You peered past the chef, so I don't sniff. What are you cooking? This isn't cooking, right? Preparation for a voyage. None of the food keeps warm that much, so we've got to cook it in my herbs. Relu. Life herbs. Fancy name, right? You know what we're a bit about cooking? Not cooking, but we want to chop the turnips and show up why. My father's a physician. The herb stops vegetables and other things from rotting. Why? Rob Crown, you're in the crown and it snaps the knife back. We've already got a sore bones on this ship. But let me tell you something, boy. Vanilla's not to be messed with. If she catches word of you knowing about herbs, she'll show you gob shots. Good doctors are to find. So if you're on a ship, you will cheap you good. They know you're the one that catches them up. Another healer comes along with them, they get a bit bad temper. Oh, yeah. Another wants to burn oh, hands yeah. off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's alright, I'm not sure. I don't want to be a healer. It's good life, I'm going to find the right shit. I don't want to be a healer. I'm I'm meant for bigger things in this kitchen. Rubbery, great. Can't get much bigger than this. You want to be an adventurer? After some great girl or some beastly boy? You want to be in the stars? Welcome to remember you. Yeah. I've stabbed the turn and was about to face the ship with a grin. My mother told me stories about heroes. Like your lass. She killed monsters in Herobelt. The one left Brianne. The back of the sorcerer in Dago City. And stole a magic sword. So you'd like your own name to be in that list. More than that. I want to win battles. I want to find adventure. I want to stand on top of the mountain and hold a magic sword. He struck a pose and closed his eyes. What is that then? Lots of kids talk about it, and they're saying, oh, go and do it proper without getting hurt. So, I reckon there's something behind all this. Alright. Perhaps. I had a friend called Dean back in Digo City. He was always in trouble with the city watch. One time, they hunted him into the mountains and I followed them. He was so frightened, so fragile. I jumped in and fought them off. That's how I got this. He rolled his sleeve up to show a pale scar across the dark skin of his bicep. Live on worse from kitchenware. I laughed. The would think twice before picking on my friend again. Rob Sardan's friends are always protected. I saw his eyes when they were safe again, running with gratitude. That's why you're in. So, you made one life feel safe, and now you want to be a hero for all the world to see. You? Your heart is in a happy place. The king and the nobles keep everyone under their thumb. There's hardly any food, and the soldiers run a mock everywhere. My friend wasn't the only one to get hounded and beat yet. Don't sound like a good place for a kid your age, go inside. Not that Kamas is better, and worse than anything. Don't see how it could be. People were just so dead, like sculptures.